What is up everyone? Welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm super excited because it is 12 weeks out from comp and I wanted to do a morning in the life of on a Saturday showing you what it looks like on prep in the weekend. So before we get into the video, I just have to say in order for me to do these weekly video updates and you know, video diaries showing you my everyday life, it is going to be impossible for myself over the next 12 weeks if I expect to have my hair brushed have my face done and have everything perfect for you because in reality my day-to-day -day life is nothing like super crazy it's not you know going out doing photo shoots or traveling all the time it is a lot of work and training and eating and just you know crossing my t's dotting my i's and getting through it especially on prep when time kind of gets limited when you've got to hit your steps your posing your workouts and all of that so this is me and i'm going to keep showing up keeping it as real as i can over the next 12 weeks if you have any video suggestions or things you want to know questions you have drop them in the comments or send me a message on instagram i would love to include more of what you want to see on my youtube channel but let's get into the video ross and i wake up at 4 30 in the morning but i've already weighed in and done my check-in photos this is how i'm looking at 12 weeks out I have taken a break off caffeine for a week and I'm super excited to be having Oxy Shred. I had a scoop yesterday and today I'm actually training. Then for my intro workout, this is not necessary at all, but I really like having something flavored for my creatine. So I've got some lemon ice aminos and some creatine monohydrates. Loving three berry jam on my crumpets. Okay, so usually Ross and I wake up at 4.30 in the morning and I don't have check-ins every day, only in the weekends, but woke up this morning, did my check-in, weighed in, made my pre-workout meal, I've got my oxy tree pre-workout, my intro workout, I put some music on and it's Ross's rest day, so I'm going to have the gym to myself and I'm going to use this time while I eat my pre-workout to check in with coach. Jumping straight into my warm-ups for my workout today, I've got some cat-cow poses for 10 reps as well as some lunges of course i'm doing dynamic stretches as opposed to static stretches before my workout so i'm moving through the movement five on each side and then some scorpion twists i think they're called so i do five of those and then back into cat cow how funny does this look when i speed it up again with the lunges five per side thought I'd speed up my warm-up just because the speed of it's not really super important for this the only one that it is really important on is my clam so here I'm putting the band above my knees and I'm lying on my side and doing 15 reps of clams per side but because this is sped up it's actually a lot faster than I do it so I'm holding it for two seconds at the top and then returning back down in actual speed here you can see what the tempo is actually like for this exercise. So I'm coming down and then coming back up, squeezing at the top before returning down. So I did this for 15 reps on each side and I did it for two sets as my warm up. And of course, repeating it on the other side. So I just wanted to show you a little snippet of what it's like in actual speed as opposed to sped up. My first exercise is one and one quarter hip thrust with a barbell. So as you can see, I come up to the top, I have a quarter rep range, and then I go back down for a full range. One and one quarter equals one rep, and I've got 10 reps of these for four to five sets. It's super important that we warm up properly to avoid injury, especially if you're working out first thing in the morning, like I am, as I haven't been moving around all day, so I'm starting off with 40 kilos, 20 kilo bar and 10 kilos on each side. I wish that loading up weights was as easy and as fast as this, but anyway, next up I have 50 kilos, again, just getting a good gauge of the weight that I'm going to be using for these sets as it is my first week on this training block. A few key things that you can note with my hip thrust is I'm keeping my chin tucked down, looking towards the tops of my knees. At the top of the movement, I'm not hyperextending and pushing my hips too far up that I arch my back. I'm also keeping a 90 degree angle at the top of the movement with my shins and my thighs. So I warmed up with 40 kilos, increased to 50 kilos. My next set was at 60 kilos, and then I added on an extra 2.5 to each side. So doing my finishing set at 65 kilos. I haven't done one and one quarter hip thrusts in a while. So this is definitely feeling it in my glute, but you can also see my hamstrings coming out to play here as well. 
Another exercise I haven't done in a while are B stance RDLs with dumbbells. So I've got one leg kicked back, which means I'm focusing on the front leg, hamstring and glute. So coming down, I've actually got a three, two, one tempo with a pause at the bottom. Doing a B stance as opposed to a single leg RDL is quite nice because it allows me to focus on my hamstring as opposed to worrying about my balance and core stability on this one. For these full workout videos, I am going to try and give you different angles so that you can see the form of it. Here you can see I hinge at my hips, I push my glutes back and I feel a deep stretch in that hamstring of the front leg, keeping my neck in line with my spine. It was really cold this morning so I didn't want to take my jumper off but I did try and roll it up so that you could see that I'm also keeping my back nice and flat. I'm not rounding my back to lower the weight. You want to come down to a place in which you can feel the stretch in your hamstring but you don't want to be rounding your back. Next up I have Swiss ball curls so it's said to do 20 reps of this for 4 sets or if I'm strong enough to do 10 per side single leg and honestly I wasn't sure how I felt about this, so I did the first set at 20 reps both legs, and then I decided to try doing single leg, and boy oh boy is it hard. I always find doing unilateral work quite challenging, but I absolutely love it, and these are definitely ones I'm excited to get stronger with over time. I hope this shows you that we all start somewhere, look at my legs shaking trying to do these exercises. Absolutely love it. Next up we have cable kickback, so I'm coming down, squeezing at the top before returning down, and I've got 15 reps per side for this. I finished up with 50 frog pumps with a 22 kilo weight on me, and then 50 body weight, and boy oh boy did it fire up my glutes to finish off. Let's be honest, you don't want to see me knock out a hundred frog pumps, so I've sped things up. I did my 50 with the weight, dropped it off, and then went straight into body weight ones, counting on my fingers so I didn't lose count. And then, of course, we die. <laughs> this is very different to the Smiley and Julie you'll see on my Instagram. I really want to keep it real with you and show you my actual workouts. Twice a week on my lower body days, I have a 15 minute list bike ride. So I jump on my indoor bike trainer, do 15 minutes on that. And then I aim to get six to 8,000 steps on the treadmill before I start my day because I do have a sedentary job, which means I don't really move a lot. And this just helps me get a really good head start on my day. 40 minutes on the treadmill done, four and a half Ks and 6,000 steps. Oh my gosh, I need a shower and then it's breakfast time and grocery time. I absolutely love a nice hot shower and no surprises there, I'm putting on some more active wear for my grocery shop. When it comes to getting out of the shower, I use an SPF moisturizer on my face and just like that, I'm ready to go. Okay, so post-workout today, I've got my apple oat crumble, and then I've also got a protein shake made with water and ice. I don't usually drink my protein shakes. I'll usually put protein powder with my oats, but I felt like mixing it up a little bit today. After my breakfast, I'm going to head to the supermarket. I'll show you what I get in our weekly grocery haul, and then we are going to have a sit down to chit chat all about comp prep and how it's going. Okay, so I just got home from the supermarket and it is pouring down outside, so I'm going to take you through what I got in our grocery haul this week. Orange kumina, red kumina, some carrots, some apples for stewing, a snack, some bananas for our smoothies, low potatoes, onions for soup, kiwi fruit, some eggs, 50% less added sugar and salt ketchup as always, some stock because I'm loving making soup right now, some crumpets for my pre-workout as well as some strawberry jam, some wraps for mini pizzas across the week as well as some Robin Brock rye bread, some tomatoes, some tomatoes that were on sale, I cannot believe this tiny punnet sells for $8, so I thought I'd get them, and then some rices for Ross's pre-workout. And then for protein, we have all our chicken that we bulk buy, and I portion it into 600 gram packages. And we also buy our vegetables in bulk, so we get these big two kilo bags. And of course, I thought I'd get Ross a little treat, so he's got a box of trumpets, and then some Ghana chocolate. Okay, so I thought I'd have a little sit down on the couch and update you on how things are going. I am officially 12 weeks out, so I'm doing five weight sessions a week, 
three lower, two upper. On two of those days, I'm doing a 15 minute bike ride like you saw today. So usually after a leg day, I will do 15 minutes on the bike and then I'll do my steps. Each day I try and hit between six to 8,000 steps on the treadmill before I start my day because I do have a sedentary job. And if I don't do it first thing in the morning, <laughs> I feel like my motivation kind of dies out later on in the day to do it and I just feel like it's a good start to the day before I get stuck into work. The other thing that I am doing with comp prep is posing with Toby. So each week we have a video call on Skype. He's all the way in Dubai. So usually we'll do six o'clock my time on a Monday or a Tuesday night and then I'll have my dinner after that. I'm also putting on my heels multiple times throughout the week to make sure that when I get on stage I can really make myself proud in the way that I present myself. And then what else is there to say? Oh, scale weight. So someone on Instagram from the squad actually asked me how I am feeling about my weight on the scales. And I wanted to talk about this because it hasn't actually changed in about two and a half weeks. And I know from past experience that when my weight isn't shifting, I usually can get caught up in the number, even though I know this is ridiculous and it's not important at all. I just feel like sometimes I get fixated on that number and then I get a little bit stressed and then that stops me from <laughs> dropping weight anyway. So it's very counterintuitive. And so what I want to do now is I put the scales away after this morning's check-in and I'm not going to be using the scales this week. I just want to focus on continuing to cross my T's and dot my I's. So that is, you know, two and a half weeks of the weight not going down, but I've stuck to my steps, my nutrition, weighing everything that I'm eating, my workouts, my posing, everything has been on point. So I know all I need to do is focus on relaxing and having some chill time this weekend and just making sure that I'm well and truly over being sick and the weight will just come down and you have to do the work and trust the process. It's no point saying trust the process if you're not actually doing the work that's required of you to you know, shred fat or build muscle, whatever your goal is. So my goals for the week ahead is to just really continue controlling the controllable. Okay, so that wraps up my mini morning in the life of on prep. I hope that you kind of enjoyed seeing a little snippet of this as well as our groceries and my comp prep update. I really want to do videos more often on YouTube, hopefully once a week leading up to Atlantic City, including peak week and show day, show weekend, and of course our holiday after in Orlando. If you did enjoy this video or you have any questions or suggestions, drop a comment below. I'll catch you in the next video.